The second veteran we're going to induct was a man whose career spanned both sides of World War II and every facet of racing. He started out driving midgets and sprint cars throughout the Northeast, gained quite a bit of success in that, was invited in 1938 to race in South America, in Argentina, with 25 or 30 of the greatest midget drivers in this country. They all went down on a steamship, an ocean liner, hauled their cars and equipment down there. And while he didn't win a great deal of races, uh, Oscar was quite, Oscar Cannonball Ridland we're speaking of, he was quite an operator and was said when he brought his midget back to the United States, the car weighed twice as much as it did when it left because his room and he had the tires stuffed full of gold that he somehow managed to obtain while he was in South America. Oscar was a character, he was an operator. I think uh, George Pendergast went to the Oscar Ridland School of Racing. He was the first gentleman I ever bought personally a racing photo of back at the Ponta Delgada Stadium in North Tiverton, Rhode Island in 1946. I was so young my mother had to write his name on it because I didn't even know how to write yet. And he was a colorful guy, he always wore the big sheep skid collared uh, World War II aviator's jacket. Did a lot of uh, stunt driving with midgets with his uh, cohort, Bob Blair. They would crash through flaming walls. Bob always got the, uh, the position on the hood while Oscar drove blindfolded. And Oscar drove around all kinds of racetracks, blindfolded himself. He also gained fame as promoting the first midget race in New England after the war at the Topsfield Fairgrounds. And for some interesting details of that little stunt he pulled there, you really, if you don't already have it, you should get Lou Boyd's excellent book, Hot Cars and Cool Drivers. It has quite a few of Oscar's exploits on there, so suffice my repeating them, you should get yourself a copy if you don't already have one. Oscar ended up in the promoting game, it was in the Pine Speedway, which is in Lou's book, Hudson, New Hampshire, and also for a time, the Arundel Speedway, and even tried a revival of the old Ponta Delgado in 1953 where I first saw him. He had departed this world in 1973, and uh, one of our best characters was God at that time. 